A government simulation or political simulation is a game that attempts to simulate the government and politics of all or part of a nation. These games may include geopolitical situations involving the formation and execution of foreign policy, the creation of domestic political policies, or the simulation of political campaigns. They differ from the genre of classical war games due to their discouragement or abstraction of military or action elements. Background Games based on geopolitics and elections existed long before the emergence of personal computers and their ability to quickly process large amounts of statistical data. One of the earliest such games was the Game of Politics, created by Oswald Lord in 1935 which remained in print until 1960. In 1954, the board game Diplomacy was created, which differs from other wargames in that it features a negotiation phase during which players reach agreements with other players, and then execute military moves simultaneously. National politics has remained a vital area of board gaming, with products such as the 1986 board game Die Mocker featuring elections in Germany, and Wreck the Nation which satirizes the politics of the United States under the Bush administration. Nation States is a website-based simulation game that allows for the creation and customization of a nation, allowing players to shape their nation's policies via issues which the player receives on an adjustable basis. After enjoying years as a play-by-mail game, Diplomacy was one of the first games to move to take advantage of email, and continues to be a popular email game as of 2007. <laughs> Computer gaming As computers became more sophisticated, games in this genre moved beyond email to more complex simulations. For most users in Europe, the first well-known politics game was Dictator, released in 1983 by Dictronics and running on Sinclair's ZX Spectrum. One of the earliest titles in this genre was Balance of Power, designed by Chris Crawford and published in 1985. This game features conflict at the height of the Cold War, using political and policy decisions to shape outcomes rather than warfare. In Balance of Power, any armed conflict between the player and the opponent's superpower results in a nuclear war, which is considered a loss condition. Other Cold War-era games included Conflict, Middle East political simulator created by Virgin Interactive, Spectrum Holobytes Crisis in the Kremlin and Virtually Unknown Hidden Agenda. Conflict simulated a hypothetical situation in 1997 in which the player assumes the role of the Israeli Prime Minister and is obligated to employ various diplomatic and covert directives to defeat its rival nations. Surrounded by hostile nations, the player is restrained by a very limited military force and thereby encouraged to employ peaceful means to remain in power until he acquired more advanced weapons systems and power. In Crisis in the Kremlin, the user could play as the protege of any of the following Soviet politicians Mikhail Gorbachev of the reformist faction, Yegor Ligachev, leader of the hardline faction, and Boris Yeltsin, who was the prevalent figure of the nationalist faction. The player could use the simulation to test certain strategies to lead the failing Soviet Union into a new era of prosperity or force its dissolution and integration into the new world order. This game introduced the concept of budget management, citizen and faction satisfaction as well as multiple economic values and political spectrum. In Hidden Agenda the user takes the role of the president of Chimerica, a post-revolutionary Central American country, trying to juggle international relations and the needs of the country's citizens. Vertonomics has a political simulation module where players can participate in election on three levels, city elections to become a mayor, government's election and president's election. Players' politicians can change taxes, custom dues, rent rates, transportation fees and regulate budget which affecting macroeconomics of the game world. Early political simulation games were intended more for education than entertainment. In 1987, On the Campaign Trail was developed as a tool at Kent State University's political campaign management program, and engaged students in decision-making regarding the campaigns for United States Senate elections between 1970 and 1986. Subsequently, a commercial market developed for packaged games involving elections and campaigns. The 1992 game Power Politics and, before it, 1981's President-Elect focused on domestic United States political campaigns but not the running of the country upon election. 
In 1996, this was adapted to the Doonesbury Election Game, designed by Randy Chase, who also did Power Politics, and published by Mindscape, in which players conducted a campaign with the assistance of a pool of advisors selected from characters in the Doonesbury comic strip. A successor entitled Power Politics 3 was released in 2005. In 2004, Stardock published Political Machine, in which the player steers a candidate through a 41-week election cycle for United States President, developing policies and tailoring talk show appearances and speech content. The game is heavily tied to modern polling methods, using real-time feedback for how campaign strategy impacts polling numbers. In 2006, Theories Park released President Forever 2008 Plus Primaries, an election simulation game that allows the player to realistically control an entire election campaign through both the primaries and general election. President Forever 2008 Plus Primaries itself a follow-up to the highly successful general election sim President Forever, released in 2004. Some games in the genre involve enacting policies and budget decisions to sway voters. One such game is Democracy, published in 2005 by Positech Games. In Democracy, players make decisions during each turn regarding which policies to support. As turns progress, the player views how their favorability rating changes amongst certain types of voters. Candidates make promises before each election, and failure to follow through can result in lower support during the player's re-election campaign. Another is Commander-in-Chief, produced by Eversome, boasting an array of choices for domestic policy and decisions. Another such game is Tropico. There can also be found games that puts the player in the seat of a state leader, such as Superpower, and its sequel, Superpower 2, whose goals are to produce economic stability and prosperity, but the game mainly revolves around foreign policies, with the abilities to interact with other countries in many ways. The game includes a great number of real-life treaties that influence countries. <laughs> Online games Virtual Congress is an example of a government simulation game. Web-based games such as nation-states allow players to manage the day-to-day -day decisions of individual governments, and compete against rival nations. Less formally structured games are also played out in Internet forums, where players manage governments and nations according to a set of agreed rules. These such forum-based simulation games, often known as poll sims, simulate the politics of one specific nation throughout rounds set in differing time periods. Not all poll sims take place on a national level. Some poll sims take place internationally, whereas others take place on the state or local levels. Players on such games play as fictional politicians and participate in debates, media activity, and simulated elections. Realism is highly stressed with key topics of the day often debated on and spun by the players and admins who are able to shape the game world in any way that they choose. In other web-based games players register, apply for an open position either a country or person inside a country such as a politician or army general and carry out game activities either through newspapers or other activities or, more commonly, through game masters. Realism and cooperation tend to be highly promoted in such games. A few examples include United States government simulation and virtual government simulation. In VGS and UGS, you sign into the game and create your own politician and hold a seat in the United States Congress while playing with other players from around the world. You can draft and propose legislation to get it signed into law, fund raise for yourself or political party, run to hold leadership positions within Congress or your own party, or even run for higher office and potentially become elected president. The burgeoning power created by Rumsode is similar, but incorporates economic simulation and offers the option of playing in several additional countries. Another example of an online government simulation game is the long-running nations, dawn of an era geopolitical simulator. Each player is given the opportunity to select a real-life nation that they would like to play and role play as the government of that country. Rather than being based in a fictional universe or simply being a single member of a government each player is assigned to run the entire workings of their selected country's government in whatever time period the current round is set in. The Reddit model United States government is an online political simulation similar to Model Congress. Rather than being a traditional game, it is a network of subreddits that roleplay different branches of government and political parties. 
The Reddit Model House of Commons is an online political simulation. Rather than being a traditional game, it is a network of subreddits that role-play and simulate the politics of the United Kingdom, including the House of Commons, House of Lords and Scottish Parliament. The Discord We the People Mock Government is an online political simulation. Rather than being a traditional game, it is a network of servers that role-play and simulate the politics of the United States, including Congress, the Presidential Cabinet, the Supreme Court, and individual states. The Discord United States of America also emulates the federal, state and local governments of the United States of America. There are many Discord servers that simulate real nations, with the most various nations being either, the Soviet Union, the United States, or other European nations. Most Discord-based nation simulators are commonly referred to as cybernations. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Related games. Other construction and management simulations require government management. For example, city building games such as the SimCity series of games developed and published by Maxi simulates the experience of being a mayor. SimCity features a real-time environment in which the player can create zones for city development, build roads, power and water utilities, and watch as their city develops based on their decisions. The game was originally published in 1989 and as of 2013 was in its fifth major release. Strategy games frequently make use of government management challenges. Four-tenth games require the management of a government, be it tribal or interstellar. This includes tasks such as building infrastructure and conducting trade. Galactic Civilizations II requires players to manage their approval rating to keep their political party in power. Domestic policy is sometimes abstracted with more emphasis on international conflict. For example, the Civilization series gives players total control over resources, and radically restructuring an empire is a matter of clicking a revolution button. Other strategy games focus on government management to varying degrees. For instance, in the Hearts of Iron games set in World War II, the civilian population is only a factor with partisans and manpower, whereas in Victoria a player must not only hobnob and conquer, but implement the Second Industrial Revolution while warding off ushering in real political revolutions such as the upheavals of 1848 and Communist Revolt. Government and politics have also been incorporated into adventure games. A Mind Forever Voyaging, published by Infocom in 1985, was an interactive fiction game in which the player controlled a sentient computer capable of experimenting with potential future scenarios based on varying public policy decisions. Newsweek said of the game, It isn't 1984, but in some ways it is even scarier. The 2008 game Spore features a civilization. Stage where the player controls vehicles and interacts with other cities until he or she has control of all 12 cities. Topic: <laughs> Training and Education. Beyond entertainment, these games have practical applications in training and education of government personnel. Training simulations have been created for subjects such as managing law enforcement policies such as racial profiling, the simulation of a military officer's career, and hospital responses to emergency situations. iCivics also features games such as branches of power, executive control, etc. <laughs> <laughs> Examples <laughs>